So today we're gonna to be talking about the four big takeaways for me from this new LX5. Of course, we're also gonna be doing some playing and I'm gonna share with you what my musical impressions of this instrument are. First up has to be the tone generator. Now this is the new Piano Reality modeling engine. And so it's a total revamp over the prior pure acoustic and a dramatic upgrade over the Supernatural modeling engine as well. The big takeaways here, or this engine is capable of multi-channel digital output straight to the amplifiers. And so we have an increase in fidelity. We also have an increase in the processing speed, which means that the complexity of the model has also been dramatically ramped up. Now the effect this has on the actual sound that you're getting to your ear, whether you're using headphones or the speakers, which we're definitely gonna speak about a little bit later, is an unbelievably clean, tight, and precise sound. Now as a part of that upgrade, they have also totally changed the different soundboard models that are contained within the editor. And whereas I didn't find any of the soundboard models other than really number one and sometimes five in the prior generation, there are multiple soundboard models in here that I'm finding very appropriate and enjoyable depending on the space that I'm in and whether I'm using headphones or I'm using the speakers primarily. I've also noticed that the sense of realism that I get out of both the hammer noise as well as the cabinet resonance engine is considerably better than what I've experienced in prior rendering engines from Roland. And because of the increases in fidelity that I'm getting out of those resonance engines, something pretty magical is happening musically here, which is I'm getting a very intimate sense of connection and responsiveness from the piano. So before we move on to anything else, I'd like to just play this instrument for a couple of minutes for you so you can hear some of the things I'm describing. Now I'm gonna start on the concert piano model and I've made some modifications. So here's what I've done differently in the editor. My duplex scale is two, my hammer noise is plus one. I've also set my ambience to three. The brilliance is flat at zero. So there's a lot that's happening here that I really like. The sound staging is nice and detailed and, and, and deliberate, but not to the point where it feels inauthentic. Here is the stage piano, which is the second primary acoustic piano tone. Again, I've made a couple of modifications here. The lid is standard at four, key off noise at three, hammer noise also at plus one, duplex scale at two, scale string resonance at four, damper resonance at four, key off, Cabinet also at four, soundboard type three, damper modeling at five. And I have not in either one of those um, models gone in and done any single note editing.
So obviously a slightly crisper attack um, and a little bit more detail further down into the range than what I was getting out of the concert piano. So depending on what you're gonna be playing, I really find that there's a lovely contrast, but an equal amount of playability and enjoyability that I'm getting out of both of those models. Next on the list, let's talk about the speakers because this is a major reconfiguration compared to what they were doing in the prior LX705. Not only have they moved to digital amplification, they have dramatically increase the power of those amplifiers. Now we're close to 100 watts total for the system versus 60 in the prior instrument. And all the speakers are now contained in the top portion of the cabinet. Now this is as much a musical consideration as it is a practical one. By keeping all of the speakers in the upper cabinet, it makes transporting the instrument a little bit easier in box, but it also just gets your ear closer to all of the speakers. The major increase in power has actually generally been directed towards the tweeters rather than the mains, which is giving you a lot more of that higher end sort of mechanical artifact as well as the resonance. And although I've got the music stand fully pushed in so that on the video you can see the control panel as well as the keys, Anyone using this at home, I would strongly suggest extending the music desk because you're going to get just that much more high-end detail, which I really love. The more high-end detail you get, especially if the speakers are positioned well and the fidelity is high enough, the more of a sound stage you're going to experience. Third thing worth mentioning is the action because people are gonna quickly glance at this and say, oh, it's just another instrument with the PHA-50 action which is the action that Roland uses with the uh, slightly longer uh, key bed. It's also got the stabilizer pin. Uh, it's got wood panels on the sides of the keys. Um, and it's, it's generally speaking been a really well received professional grade action out in the community. So there are a couple of updates both to the physical action as well as the sensor technology that they're using here. First of all, the PHA actions coming out most recently are physically quieter than uh, the PHA actions from say four or five years ago. I also believe that they've updated not just the dampening but also the greasing of the PHA 50. So you're going to experience a slightly more fluid action, less mechanical sound and definitely less of a thump at the bottom of the key bed. But it's really the triple sensor upgrades here that I think nuanced players are going to be able to, to feel the most. Essentially what we've got is a changed algorithm for how the computer is interpreting the triple sensor data and translating that as an input into the tone generator. The amount of time that it's taking for that sensing to take place and the data input to uh, take place has been reduced by several milliseconds which means that you're actually getting a faster tonal response and a more accurate tonal response from when you press the key. This is just going to create a greater sense of connection and responsiveness from the piano, even if it's almost at a subconscious level. But for people who are using this for inputting into a DAW or recording, you're also gonna appreciate the fact that you are gonna get a more accurate uh, MIDI curve out of this machine. And then finally, the cabinet on the LX705, I think they've done a really nice job of. There's a few subtle changes in terms of the beveling, in terms of where they've got the tone ports for you to hear some of that high-end definition. It's being offered in four finishes, uh, the charcoal black, uh, the dark rosewood, the light oak, as well as the ebony polish. And that's all wrapped around their new buttonless touchscreen, uh, which as I've demonstrated on several other videos, you can actually turn off while the instrument is still on if you don't want the visual distraction of any sort of commands. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this review of Roland's new LX5. I've certainly enjoyed getting to know this instrument. It's been a ton of fun. I think they've done a great job with this product. Please check out the links below where you can find prices local to you, no matter where you are in the world. Of course, if you're anywhere close to us, come by, say hi. We always love to see you. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, share the videos if you uh, want to, give it a like, it really helps us out here. Plus, we'd love to see you back as a regular viewer. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube. Hope to see you soon. Thanks so much.